All right, it's time. The ultimate beginner's guide going over pretty much everything in this game, everything I can cover. This video is going to be long. I'm not ready to make it, but here we are. I'm going to have timestamps down below. I'm going to be explaining as best as I can everything for you guys. Now, it's going to be a long video, but if you finish this video, you should be pretty well knowledgeable about this game by the end but if there's only certain parts you want to know about then sure go ahead if you want to discover this game for yourself i recommend it i think that's the best way to go but in terms of summoning i think that's the only thing you should really kind of listen to other people about if you haven't played the game yet but if you play jp then great as we know global's coming out on the 30th for pretty much everyone kind of sucks not in india but oh well now jp is pretty much six months ahead it's celebrating its half anniversary the minute global comes out which is a pretty decent gap that could maybe be closed, but we're going to have to see. So global should have a lot of changes, but in terms of what I'm talking about, I don't think it's things that would get changed. I think what would get changed is maybe new content and a lot of rewards. That's like two of the main things. And also maybe certain things of mages. So, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. But except for that, all timestamps are down below. So let's just hop right into it. Now, Black Clover focuses on seasons in where every season will have a theme where season one is Clover Academy or school. And then season two was summer. Now for JP, it made more sense because it came out, guess when? In the summer, but over here, not as much because of the like four, five, six month delay. So that is something. Now, the seasonals are or what we call seasonals, right? Always come out at the beginning of a season. And then two weeks later, we get the pickup units of that season, the canon units. So the season or sorry, the seasonal units are never really canon, right? Of course, they're actual units, but they're not from any particular part in story. And the pickups usually follow what's happening in story right now. Like, for example, we got chapter five with Kya with the start of the Seabed Temple. And then we also have Kiaro and Kohono who came out, which are in that arc. Now, a season has many different things like battle pass, certain limited time modes, arena season, and themed events like being able to have a point event for summer and getting certain very good rewards. And then a Halloween type of mission event where you could get a lot of other good rewards. They've, we've had some pretty good events, but not exactly the most enjoyable. The main part of a season is definitely the units in a game like this, but maybe in the future with real time coming, it's going to be a lot more enjoyable. We have sometimes some new game modes that come out, but except for that, there's uh, not too much in that point. Now, of course, there is a story mode, and this story mode usually releases a new chapter every single month on JP, but for global, it might be a bit quicker than that until we catch up to JP because of the fact we're three whole chapters behind. So that's technically three months worth of content, which we could easily catch up to. And the story is voiced in English at JP, and also, there are many different uh, languages within the game for text and subtitles, probably at least 10, I think. If you go to the app store, you can see which ones there are. But I know off the top of my head, English, French, German, Korean, Japanese, obviously. Um, I think Chinese, I think. And then uh, Thai. I'm pretty sure those are like some of the ones that I'm remembering off of the top of my head, plus Spanish. So... Let's just uh, get right into it. We'll have to explain a lot of stuff, but seasonals, it's basically, it works off a of season. Okay, that's that's what you should understand. Beginning of the season, we get our seasonal units that are based off of actual skins. It's a full different unit. Okay, we get a full different unit, full different animations, and usually they are the bread and butter of the whole thing. Then two weeks later, we get pickup cannon units. So Black Clover Mobile is a four versus four turn-based game that relies off of speed and mobility to determine the turn order, where speed fills up your mobility gauge the most. And once you get to 100% mobility, you are attacking next. As you can see, Charlotte is at 100% on the yellow bar. Now, everyone has four skills. The first one being repeatable as much as you want to use it. The second one having a three turn cooldown. This being a combination skill between the two mages, these two, and then these two, as you can see by my mouse, and then an ultimate. Now, both the ultimate and the combo use SP points, and SP points are regenerated every turn and can sometimes be regenerated by certain things. If you want more information on how the combat system works, you could go check out my combat video. But overall, I think it's a pretty good combat system that is kind of held back by there being no PvP. But if they could do it right, it could be very good. There's a lot of debuffs and buffs, some unique to this game, but obviously they do have a stun mechanic, DOTs, actual debuffs that reduce attack, taunt, reduce defense, would make you take more damage, right? Stuff like that. And then buffs with like barrier speed, increased attack, um, what else? Healing, right? Increased defense damage reduction, all stuff like that, increased speed, right? So all that stuff. Now there's an auto mode and obviously there is a uh, speed increase for like uh, the, the animations. 
Now you're also able to either have full animations or completely cut. So let's say a full alt would obviously you know what it would look like. But if we're using just this, right, it's going to be cut halfway through. And yeah, that's basically it in terms of battling part. But um, if you want more information on that, then you go ahead and check out more stuff. But of course, there's five, th there's five roles, three colors. There's attack, defender, healer, supporter and i'm forgetting one debuffer now as for the colors it's red green and blue and type advantage and disadvantage usually play a pretty big role giving 20 percent increased damage and crit rate and obviously the opposite effect of 20 percent less damage and 10 percent less crit rate when you are type disadvantage obviously blue beats red red beats green green beats blue if we get more colors in the future we will see but as of right now i have no clue probably won't so let's talk about most of the things on this menu we'll talk about the skill pages and gear at a later part in this video but to start off there are three base rarities being rare sr and ssr all mages are able to become lr and i mean i i do have a decent bit if we check my kr right now that are lr but obviously my kr just closed so i can't really show you but you can see everyone is able to get up to lr but uh, yeah, so the SSRs are yellow, the SRs are silver, and then the rares are green. The max level is 100 for everyone. It's not like everyone, anyone, like any rarity has a different max level. And to get to that level 100, you will need to first rank up. So I'll show you what the rank up looks like. You'll need to rank up using shared mage pieces for either rare SR or SSR. And these can be gotten in many different ways from the shop, from bond, from limited time events from i mean i don't know anything else but like mainly just events and stuff like that and then afterwards you will need to be promoting the mage so if we check it out let me try to find it but all right so if you promote someone you're gonna have to be at certain bond levels which we'll talk about very pretty much right after this and you once you get to these bond levels you will be allowed to promote them from ssr to ur and then ur to lr now bond is the kind of effects system that is in the game and basically it's going to give you xp for the bond every time you use a mage and certain stages like the patrol stages will be giving much more bond xp than other stages and you must of course get to the certain levels as you can see here for an ssr it's four to get to ur and 10 you must get to 10 to get to lr which kind of sucks only for mainly whales, people who've pulled dupes, because before it used to be that you would have to just get five of the dupes that they would give throughout the bond system, but now it's just a bit different. Now, there are five extra levels after getting to 10. Now, everyone at, at 10 gets the LR conditions. Uh, these five extra in total give you 390, sorry, 380, but you get 410 total counting these three, which is basically more than three pulls per unit. Every single unit gives you this amount of crystals, which means you have access to more than like 200 pulls from just maxing every rare SR and SSR out. Now you also get, very cool, a skin at costume level or bond level 9 for everyone. You will see the skins over here. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. Some look good, some look kind of mid like this one. You're able to level up every single skill to level 5 and it will either increase the attack or the passive of the thing as we see here. Level 2 increases the attack and magic attack and then level 3 increases the taunting. So that's part of the passive. Now on the skills, you can also see that there's both attack and magic attack. There are two attack stats in this game and many more, but in terms of the stats, many are either built with attack or magic attack, where for example, Asta has no magic, so he has only attack. And then someone like Langris has no attack. And then Yami obviously has more attack because he's physical. So see it like as a physical attack and then magic attack. So obviously someone like Finral is gonna have more magic and then someone like Jack is gonna have more physical attack. So you usually want to build them one or the other, but some are like kind of 50-50. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's one or the other usually, but they have the same percentages for both attack and magic attack on every single skill. That's kind of just how it is. It's a bit weird to understand, but you'll get used to it. Now then, there is an enhancement system where it is basically dupes. And these dupes obviously are going to be giving you more stats every time you get a dupe and you're able to either dupe them out through getting a dupe of the character or using these universal stones which you could get from either completing monthlies or also they have a special uh, beginner event which gives you three so you get three free ssr dupes and then there's also raids that you're able to get it from in the future but actually it's gonna be pretty soon after global does come out i'm pretty sure 
Now, from this, you're going to be getting stats per level. You can see here which stats it gives. And then at dupe level 2, you're going to be getting the dupe passive. And then at dupe level 5, you're going to be increasing that dupe passive even further, usually doubling the percentage or adding even more. As we see, it goes from 5 to 10%. And the last two usually give an extra third stat or maybe an extra fourth st uh, stat, but they usually give an extra stat. Now, you see, there is another passive too that you unlock when you get to LR, it is the unique passive. So it's basically a free passive. And then you got the LR, uh, sorry, the dupe passive with this one. Now these are talents. Talents provide bonuses for both for attack, defense, and utility. So attack obviously is going to do different things for attack, like increasing damage, crit damage, crit rate, or damage against bosses. This is going to like basically increase your defense or just defending and in ways like increasing defense outright, HP, or crit resistance. And then the utility has some different stuff. Some things that could be considered attack, some things that could be considered just getting an alt quicker. So it has all that. And when you complete the full six circle, the full, well, the six slots, you're unlocking the talent carved stone thing where you're basically going to be able to put one of the stones that you have in your box by getting them usually through either uh, challenges or limited challenges where it could give either like defense for these or like attack and crit damage for the ones on top or something like speed so the only way you're able to increase your speed is usually through dupes through gear um gear sets or through talents the green talents that's the only three things that lets you artificially increase your speed all right, we clear on that. So that's basically all for mages. Now you do see this right here, the skill pages, and you're able to well, dupe them up to five times. So you could get either level one or up to level six, each one increasing the passive. So for this, there are both just normal skill pages, which have only a passive or unique skill pages, which also increase the skill of the unit it's on so like Veto is going to increase Veto's skill two mars is going to increase his skill one by adding increased defense level one outright every time you use the skill one and obviously this passive is able to be used on anyone so let's say for example the free ssr red yami skill page that everyone is going to be getting do i have it uh yeah so this one everyone's getting it for free this part where it gives increased crit damage buff for two turns for each instance of DLT an enemy is taking is only available for Yami on his skill two. Now this part where it grants 2.5% increased crit rate is able to be used on everyone. Stacks up to five times, but it's able to be used on everyone. So I could unequip it and let's say put it on this Yami and you will see that even though it's a character, you're going to be able to see that passive is still going to be there for, for this guy. Now, it gives no stats a skill page, but it does give CC because of the passive. They do treat passives as like extra CC. Just how it is. A bit weird, a bit whack. But yeah, consider it the weapon of these games. Now, these don't really have any uniqueness to them. It's just the passive outright. You can see here, it's literally just that. There are some good ones, uh, definitely. Like this one is pretty good. And this one is pretty good. And this one against bosses, but that's essentially it. There's some others, but I'm not trying to go over everything now you are able to get some duped stones for this for free we've gotten two so far on jp through a certain raid but no more now also there was a special banner where it was a step up and in 200 pulls which you got two multis for free um you get three universals three universal dupes for skill pages in 200 pulls it's pretty good people got like 10 plus dupes for skill pages that could be universally used so overall that is pretty good so let's explain the summoning system now to start off, it is very free to play in this game. It takes 120 black crystals to do a single summon and 1200 for multi, and they are converted to summoning tickets before actually summoning. And you're going to find yourself getting a lot of tickets too, which I have 71 and then 21,000 crystals, right? Oh, let me not. We're not trying to show prices here. Come on. We're not trying to promote that. Now, anyway, every banner besides the skill page uh, rate up banner, which is exclusive currently to global, has a 60-40 split being favored towards the mages. So the weapons or skill pages of this game are not exclusively on other banners, but they are also on this banner as they share the same one, which can sometimes be scary. But yeah, obviously the rate up mage also has the rate up skill page for them being considered. The pity on pretty much every banner is 200 pulls. Um, unless we're talking about a step up, which doesn't really have a pity unless certain ones do, but it, it's kind of a bit situational. Now, the normal banner type is called a pickup banner, and those are the ones that feature cannon units. I'm going to go to KR for this, actually, because it makes a bit more sense. So these banners feature the new cannon units that relate usually to story. Their pity is 200, and they're rated up at 1%. 
if it's going to load. They rate it up at 1%, with the skill page being rated up at 0.68%, which is overall pretty good. Now, once third banner leaves, it actually goes to the unfeatured. So they are permanently on the unfeatured, which I think is, per is really good. Really, really good. You could see all these, almost all these units. Half of these units were not here on launch. Red Yuno, know, Red Yami, Langris, Guldri, Lich, Kiaro, Kahono, Veto, Veto, Fauna, Raya, and that's it. All those units came afterwards and so did their skill pages. So it becomes ever so smaller. So I don't know how it's going to be in the future when you consider it's already at 0.068, which is kind of wild. But it's 1.5% for the unfeatured on pickup banners, which is still pretty good. Now there's a seasonal banner, which let me just pull it up, I guess, right now. So seasonal banners are, of course, the seasonal units who have the skins on and are completely new units. Now, as for... Oh, wow, I didn't mean to do that. As for this set, there's only two, but from seasons one to four, it was actually three units rated up at 1.5%. So it's increased more units on a banner, but also increased. Now, it's still 1.5% with only two, so it went up to 0.75 per. Now, as for skill pages, the skill pages are 1%, so the new featured total is 2.5% which is honestly really good. And at Pity, you get one of these two randomly, not the skill pages, but random. Now there's also a skill page only banner for seasonals, which at Pity is gonna be one of the three seasonals. Now the seasonals are rated up at, I'm pretty sure 1.5%. Uh, the skill pages the skill pages on those banners are at 1.5%. So that is pretty good. Now it's a global exclusive type of banner. So, you know, do it with it what you will, but I don't really think those are going to be good for anyone but whales. But it's still decent. For later banners, obviously it's going to be pretty good because there's only going to be two skill pages on a banner, so that is going to be pretty 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 good now there are step ups in this game and the only thing you really need to know is that it costs 90 pulls but it's 10 multis because you get two half off and then at the 10 step you get it guaranteed usually it's old units returning again that's the only that's literally the only time it's a step up now then uh you could see on the banner rate now when i show you that there's also a just premium banner which you're able to get one free daily single which is pretty cool would be crazy if we got a rainbow but we don't now i've gotten some ssr sometimes which honestly pretty good i've i have gotten a lot of red yamis even though he's max duped but oh well anyway so it brings your pity up by one obviously this one also has a pity of 200 every single banner has a pity of 200 right except for um, step up now you will see that the seasonals are here rated up at the same as everyone else but it's only because they're like basically here after the banner leaves so once the seasonal banner ends they're still here for two weeks while the season is completed and technically you could get the seasonals completely free from this method which i would say is pretty crazy right it's very good especially because it's free now all of this pity gets converted so from this banner and the seasonal banner are the only two ones with the actual bonus gauge and if you have leftover and did not go to pity you will be able to go to the shop it's the only time i'm going to go and shop in this video but a uh, second actually no there will be another time you could go to shop and every single month they reset this shop on canada it is a bit better so i guess i'll show it there because it's probably going to be more similar to canada but you will see that the exchange center bonus better coin gauge is going to have all this so you could get some gold xp potions some bond food or gift bond box gifts whatever and then you're able to get five singles a month just from having extra 50 pity on both if you consider both the seasonal banner or the premium banner and on the premium banner you should have about 30 bonus gauge every single time if the season is 30 days so that's at least three free pulls extra every month just for doing just for pulling just for doing your free daily pull you're getting 30 pulls because obviously 30 days in a season so yeah anyway that it's, it's pretty good overall yeah these are all the banner types that we have currently now i guess there is also this the last one that currently is not going to probably not going to be on global for a while is the selection type of banner where it chooses you're able to choose a rate up and currently there is the seasonal rate ups but usually it's only access to the pickups and you're able to choose either the mage or the skill page and go from there the person you choose will be rated up and you could get pity now if you switch it's also i'm pretty sure going to remove your pity so that's it it's going to reset your pity back to 200. now a very very cool thing 
is that there is a gateway of destiny. And what is this gateway? Basically, when you complete your monthly every single month, you're going to be getting this key. Now, this key, when you get it, is going to be allowing you to pick one of the seasonal units for free. When you complete six missions, which change every season, but usually you can comp complete those missions in about a week, and you get access to one of them for free. Like, you just pull them. That's it. Okay, you use the key and you get them. Now, I have both of these max duped because I summoned a lot. So at least it saved me a key, which is great. At the moment, we can only use one key a season, but maybe in the future, that's going to change. What we'd have to see it would be great. Now, why it's really good now is that basically all you do is you pull until you get one of these two and then you pick the other one and then you're done for the season for free to place. It's a very good system. Now, uh, if you choose one and then you reset, you're going to still keep your key. So yeah, that does stay the same. But if you don't use it, you're still going to keep your key. So to me, that's pretty good. I do like that. I get to keep my key. And honestly, a very good system gateway, just being able to pick one of the seasonals, which are usually the better units in a season. Oh yeah, I definitely, there's no complaints for me about that. Now, let's go back to global and talk about gear. It does get very in depth, but the gear system is a puzzle type of system where you got to fit four different types of, or four gear in one. There is two rectangle pieces, a square piece and a sideways rectangle. So a horizontal rectangle and a vertical rectangle. So there is up to a four set, but there's a two set and a four set bonus for each set. And there's also upgraded and non-upgraded versions. For example, we have the star and the non-star one where defense for the non-upgraded is 250 for a two piece and then 20% for the four piece. Now, if we check the upgraded defense, it's 20, uh, it's 30% for the two piece and then 40% increase for the four piece plus 8% damage reduction. So it's a greatly increased two piece and four piece bonus. So I'd say usually you do want to go for these. Now, the only other thing I could really say at the moment is that uh, there's accessories that could be gotten by combining 10 together. But except for that, go more in depth if you want to see there's substats that you get every four levels and you can get up to LR gear and... Uh, that's, that's basically it for now. There's not really much more to say in a beginner's guide type of way. Just that there's four different pieces that you could equip. One being the two rectangles. The only thing I'll say, one rectangle, or yeah, I'll, I'll show this. So there's only three different shapes, really. One rectangle is for attack and one rectangle is for defense. The attack one could be either attack or magic attack. And then the defense one is just defense. The HP one is, or this one is just HP. And then the square is either attack or magic attack for the main stats. The substats could be literally whatever stat there is, except for speed. I'm pretty sure except for speed. Yeah, except for speed. Everything else could be a substat, except for speed, which thank God it is like that. So it's possible it changes further, but there's daily, weekly, and monthly missions. Dailies, obviously, you want to just complete them. And once you complete them, it will add both a day. Obviously, you have to complete a certain amount of points. You don't have to complete every single daily. You could leave out one of them usually. Now, once you complete the daily, it's going to add a tick to the daily reward mission for both the weekly, which is only five days, but technically is a weekly. So you can complete the six times in a month. And then the monthly, which is 30 days, but we'll see how that goes. But anyway... Uh, from the monthly, you do get a universal dupe plus the key that you need to get the free seasonal. And they give pretty good rewards the monthly, so that's pretty nice. Now, um, if you don't actually complete it in a month, it's not going to reset. Like, it only resets once you get the rewards. So, overall, it's pretty good. I do like it. I mean, you could leave for a month, come back, and like, my friend here, he had 29 days on his monthly when he left, and he came back and he got the seasonal key, which... I find it's pretty funny. Plus a free SSR universal dupe. So that's overall pretty good. Now, the other type of missions is feats. So feats, basically, you complete basically anything. Like we see here, collect certain amount of mages, enhance mages, flourish, or just clear evergreen forests 1855 times. Enhance a skill page 60 times. Everyone will give you a certain amount of points. And then it's going to fill up a bar. And on the bar, you're able to get crystals. Or if I go to the KR side, I have it here too. On the KR side, it would be shared mage pieces. So you could get both shared mage pieces to rank up units, not promote, to rank up, or crystals from the top reward. Now, from the bottom, you could get pretty much anything, right? So it's just, it's like that. Basically, how it is for missions, right? Now, if we go to Arena, let's head to Arena. So, so far, we've done mages, we've done summoning, we've done feats and missions. So now we're starting to get to the more bottom part of this area so arena arena is the main content that people really push towards because it's just the only thing with an actual ranking system now you do not fight actual p players teams real-time pvp is coming later but you're gonna fight the teams that people set up and you set it up in defense and you're actually able to preset the skills to make it seem like you're kind of fighting a real player i feel like it's much more interesting 
odd JP than it is global, but global, it's it's okay for now. We'll have to see how it is. Now there is an arena shop and you get uh, basically 10 runs a day. No, you should get 12 because it's every two hours. So you get 12 runs a day for arena. You could buy three and you get some in the guild shop. So uh, there's an exchange center that gives pretty good stuff. Later on, it's going to be giving LR gear from this, and then it also gives daily gold, which is nice, and it gives a pretty cool frame. So, yeah, it does give some pretty good stuff. I'd say the gold is definitely the best. 300,000 gold every day is something that anyone should take. Now, there's both an upper league and a lower league that you could see here. I am somehow in the upper league, but I'll probably be demoted anyway. But you could see that there's all this for the lower league. And if you get top 500, you're going to be booted up to the uh, upper league. And you have to stay in the top 500 to stay in the upper league because they're constantly recycling. So week one, there's zero people in upper league. Week two, there's 500. Week two, sorry, week three. No, day, okay. Well, week zero, let's say there's no one. Week one, no. Week one, there's zero people in upper. Week two there's 500 week three there's a thousand and then afterwards 500 people get booted off okay now it also has a seasonal reward and a weekly reward you could see here there's weekly rewards and there's also one-time rewards if you just hit the rank and then there's a seasonal reward that you're going to see here it doesn't give that much but it's basically a reward you get once a season and that's basically it now let's talk about the challenges we're going to be talking about basically everything here so this whole section now normal challenges you will see there's xp that you could farm here that is on mono so it's uh, not mono it's non mono where it's every single color now for the gear dungeon there is both red blue and green and each type also gives different types of gears and fights different types of monsters with different colors red obviously being only red blue only being green uh, sorry blue only being blue and green only being green monsters so you usually would use a blue team against red green team against blue and then a red team against green now you get different gear sets from the red one you get speed defense and attack and then on the later stages as you can see here you're gonna get the upgraded one starting from the 10th one now uh, recommended power is a pretty important thing i guess but not like anything too needed right usually you could be under and it's still fine there's a recommended button if you're not sure what to use or just check out my videos right so yeah that's basically it the red one is usually the one you're going to be farming most of the time then you've got this which is basically just giving you gear upgrade materials and some substat upgrade materials which it, that's literally all it gives nothing too crazy then this is going to be what you use or what you're going to be grinding to unlock talents so i want to quickly very quickly just because i think it's the best time to explain it go over to KR and explain a couple different things. So you're gonna see certain menus when Global comes out, much more. This is going to allow you to auto repeat as many times and you could go up to 50 by times one and by times three, which means you could do 150 runs, but every run is gonna give you triple the rewards for triple the stamina. Now there's a dispatch system where um, no matter like how strong your units are, usually I'm pretty strong Global, it's gonna be, you have to be higher than the CC requirements. If you just put it to 50 and you press okay, well, guess what? You're just going to be able to get, after an hour 40, all 50 grinded runs right away. No matter if your units are perfectly built or not, if you lose, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really count that. It just does it for you. And then by the end, it grinds it. And then, yeah, so this is the times three function. And then here, you're able to preset your skills. So all that is good. But because of the dispatch system, it should make it so that you don't really auto as much. And you're just using the dispatch while doing other things in the game. Because you could have your game closed. Or you could be playing story, doing arena, doing limited time challenges. Now, next up, we got Bond Patrol, or it's just Patrol Stages, and where these are the things that's going to be very much leveling up your Bond by giving you much more Bond XP, and it's going to be giving you a bunch of rewards, and hopefully they do stay the same, but I will keep you updated on that, and it gets up to 27 stars, and by the 27 star, you're getting all the rewards. In total, this, for the first three worlds, it's giving 500 crystals plus 10 tickets, so basically 14 pulls. Now, from World, world 4 onwards, what it is giving is the 500 crystals plus only three tickets at the end. And there's two patrol stages per world. So always, like every single world has that. Now you see it gives three tickets instead of 10. And overall, I'd say that's fine. So we'll get back to the world later on, but let's start talking about everything else. So memory hall is a thing. They took out crystals on JP, on, uh, sorry, on global. But basically you use your memory tickets and you're going to be getting some every three hours. And what you're getting from it is the world medals, which you could use at the world shops to get a bunch of different rewards. And you can also get these shared mage pieces at a very low rate. Now, 
The bottom one also gives skill pages. You can get SSR skill pages, the basically non-unique ones. The best ones to farm is definitely this one. And then I think this one it is. Yeah, this one for the HP are pretty good. But yeah, look at Gulduri. The gold, the gold. So after this, uh, let's go to the um, limited challenges. Now, Hall of Illusions did move over to uh, the general dungeon to where it's never going to reset again. So I'm not even going to talk about this because I'm pretty sure when Global comes out, because they should be following JP with Dispatch and all that, they're going to remove this. So it's not going to be something that resets. It's going to be a one-time thing, but they are going to be adding more Hall of Illusions that are actual events in Season 7. Actually, should be tomorrow morning. Patch notes, so we'll see if we get a new Hall of Illusions. But anyway, uh, basically, you fight stages. It's like a tower thing. Every single stage gives rewards, and usually you get um, just crystals, and every, you get crystals every 10 stages, and then you're getting some skill materials every 5 stages, and hopefully when it gets expanded even further than 70, because at the moment, it's only at 70 on Canada, but when it gets expanded further, we're going to be getting even better rewards and even more. So yeah, now the season rewards are not really there to stay. But Hall of Illusions is going to probably go to the never resetting thing, which is the just challenges. So it's never going to reset again. Now there's limited challenges that reset every single day in terms of the amount of attempts you could do. And there's certain game modes. We've had two so far on JP. And then also we just have these type of things where it gives... The highest rarity of stuff where if you play on this one you're gonna be getting you have a chance to get lr accessories but it's not guaranteed and then stuff like that everything it resets every single day and you can see a schedule here which i guess it shows on the forum but we don't really have a forum so i'm not really sure what they're saying with that but yeah the daily reset it's going to show here and yeah the season two thing doesn't really doesn't really mean anything. So one of the th definitely the biggest limited time challenges you're going to be seeing the most is raids. That are the things that give the SSR universal dupes for mages and skill pages. So it's definitely the thing you want to farm the most when it does come out. Usually you get three daily challenge or daily times you could attempt it every single day. Now then, there's the Black Bulls hideout. Would have been cool if we could have all the hideouts. So if like in our squad, that that's how I would have liked it, man. But obviously they can't do that. It would have been crazy to me. Like, that would have been the biggest appeal. So let's go around. Yami, you're able to just play a card game with them. And it's the speed card game where you have to kind of like, if there's a four, you have to put a three or a five. And you want to get rid of all your cards. And you do get some rewards. You get up to 180 crystals a week from this. But it's not that crazy to me overall. Now, Vanessa, you're able to do a couple different things. You're able to disassemble gear pieces, which I think is uh, pretty nice that they do something like that. You're able to craft accessories by giving 10 equipments. You're able to craft an accessory, which are the three things you could put on the top. And then you're able to craft upgrade stones from the disassembled stone powder. You're able to craft accessories with the red, accessory upgrades with the red, and then gears for the blue. Now, let's continue going on. Um, what else? So, Charmy is going to be creating food. You could use food in every type of PvE content, not Arena. And so, like, you'll see stuff like HP increase, gold increase, um, XP increase, gear drop rate increase, increase attack and magic attack, stuff like that. You make it at Charmy. Then, we've got Gray, who does become... Let me... You know, I'll spoil you guys, because, you know, why not, right? Why not? But she does become actual gray when you get the reveal later on. So I think that the Black Bull should update over time, but no confirmation on that. Anyway, you're able to convert items like talents and then also gear uh, accessory upgrades up and down and also gear upgrades up and down. So yeah, like either this one is taking the green to make the yellow and then um, where is it? I guess, the, yeah, so this one is taking the yellow to make the purple. But for these, you're able to go both ways and where either the purple is making the yellow or the green is making the yellow. So yeah, that's basically how you are able to do it. That's what Gray does. And then we got Gordon, who is to disassemble skill pages and you are salvage, I guess. So you're going to be doing that. And then with those materials that you get from the salvage skill pages, you're going to be able to go to the exchange center, go to skill page salvage. And then once a month, you get a free SSR skill page from the base units including the unfeatured characters and you can also get three sr uh, sorry rare to ssr skill page random tickets a week maybe we'll get lucky okay well it is what it is so i don't have a squad on uh canada because i left the number one squad before global came out because i can't really do them like that but let's talk about it so uh, level one guild is able to have a max of 12 people and there is check-in rewards that you're going to see right here and they're pretty good in a in a month you're getting six tickets 
320 plus 320 so 640 t crystals plus six tickets which is pretty good over a multi just for logging in from this now you're able to donate gold and crystals every day the they're both going to be giving these medals to you right these things and then this gold is going to be giving the coins and then this one's gonna be giving the like star rewards now there's three different things of course both of them give this rewards which is gonna have um basically things that you could buy such as skill materials some stamina some xp potions some gear upgrades and we'll talk about the later parts after and then everyone who donates either the gold for the coins and then the crystals for the stars both of those are going to be what the guild leaders are able to buy for the whole guild so when you buy something as a guild leader the whole guild gets it and you're able to get basically um, certain furniture that's going to be increasing your buffs for cer certain things that you're able to activate right here so i've got a bond increase buff where it's giving me 12 percent more bond xp and then 12 percent more gear drop rate are the two things that i could get we could get other things like stamina gold story tickets or i guess memory tickets on um global some summoning tickets and yeah now there are missions also to give you some extra ones that you want everyone to do. There's some rankings for the guild. We're 192, but obviously we're not really that crazy. There is squad battles that gives you rewards for getting a certain amount of points. To me, it's like guild versus guild, like in Legends, if anything, and where you try to get the most amount of points by just doing things in the game. Usually by grinding gear, that's like the main thing that gives you the points. But yeah, now there's also guild boss that I have to do today. But if you get a certain amount of points by beating the three difficulties, this one giving 300 points, you're going to be getting some rewards here, some pretty good rewards. Overall, it gives some gear substat rerolls, which is exclusive to JP only. But you can also get some gears, some actual LR gears later on. And if you beat the point requirements on the bottom here, you're going to get other types of rewards. Now, what every single time you beat it also gives you is access to these coins, which are able to get you either some skill materials or some accessories, LR accessories, which is overall pretty good. The skill materials it's a lot it's a lot it really is a lot and it's honestly really nice so the guild boss system is pretty good and then the decorations is just showing the furniture like what you could equip to get the buffs now the buffs themselves last 30 minutes each you could equip it three times a day and it's like exclusive to everyone so like i could do this and then someone else is also able to do it their own three times now the last thing we really got to talk about we're gonna head back over to canada is just the overworld and also story so of course we get one story chapter usually a month you could check here how what the rewards are for the first you get 300 crystals per and then for three to five you're getting 1200 crystals so a multi once you complete the chapter there's different episodes you could watch the cutscenes again and in the overworld you can see what you're able to do so you're able to get memory shards which is going to give you a skill page and starting from chapter five you're actually getting an ssr skill page when you complete this so it's going to show you where you could get them here now there's citizen requests which are like sub quests that actually give 60 crystals per character so that's 60 120 180 240 300 360 crystals right there which overall is pretty good now you're also able to fish which to me is like i don't care but like here's the fishing system these are the rewards you're able to get on the bottom at different percentages hopefully i do get it there we go and then asta fish so you're in like a chibi overworld here and of course you're able to get the um what's it called the patrol stages here which we talked about before and yeah there's world reputations for each of them there's up to level five which in total gives you 800 crystals and at dupe level four or at world level four you're able to get a dupe shard for the base characters which i think is kind of goaded overall and every world level up to three allows you to get more rewards in the region shop so if we go to this one we'll go to the region store now we're in the um, actual like uh world parts where we're not chibi anymore and it looks pretty good right this does look pretty good um you're able to get certain chests in these overworlds where it's going to give you some crystals or some uh some of those uh, puzzle pieces and uh, there's not many people you could interact with except for the people that are uh, for the sub quests but also that's julius right there that's the grandma julius just to kind of show you guys kind of cool you're going to see them when you play but yeah that's the kind of fit that julius pulled up in to kind of spy on asta but if you go to the shop you're able to get certain rewards every month or weekly as you can see here the skill enhancement materials are monthly and so are the bond foods or sorry these are weekly my bad my bad my bad these are weekly you can buy it every week every world has different ones and you can get a bunch of food every week if you don't want to like go every time to the world to see what they have you could just press the shop and it's going to show you what's out or what's in and what you have access to and what you could sell but i don't really think you should be 
selling. So yeah, story does come out every single month usually uh, when they have a consistent schedule on JP. So when Global does come out, it should be like that. We basically went over everything if I'm just looking at it. That's the beginner's guide. 40 minutes. It, it's a lot, right? Now in the overworld, you could also, the last thing I could say is you could explore. You could explore. Um, let me try to find it. What I mean. Okay, so you could do things like this where you could pick stuff up and this is counting as exploring. So besides that, we'll just do a miscellaneous right now. Okay, so this is the miscellaneous part. There's events and where it shows everything that's happening right now. And in the actual events, you're going to see the kind of real events, any playtime or burning time and the actual playtime and where you need to play 90 minutes to get the full rewards. Now, besides that, there's inventory for skill pages, gear, mage pieces, actual materials, consumables that you could actually consume and then other, which explanatory um then we've got friends which you're able to send gifts to which i do recommend and you're able to fight the actual friends in there which is also pretty good now there's the shop which all this is for the shop then there's mage pieces where you could use your dupes to actually get stuff out of it like stamina skip tickets the shared mage pieces and some bond boxes then there's general that uses gold and crystals and here it's the special ones okay now what else am i missing um really is only glossary you could see everything that's in the game you're able to use the mages even if you don't have them you're able to see and also if you press this icon you could kind of go up and see their max stats and what they get from being duped out so that's all pretty good game's cool um i hope you guys like the game i've made like over 500 500 vids on it i've tweeted a bit too many times on my news twitter account and uh yeah that's that's basically it i hope this helped you guys even understand the game a bit more hey man in 40 minutes they should have they should have so Let's finish this off by doing a celebratory single, not a multi, y'all are crazy. We'll do a single, because why not? If we got anything, that would have been crazy. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.